Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name's Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to get started writing YAML. A YAML is a data serialization language, which means it's basically just used to store information about different things. And we can use YAML to define key value pairs, things like variables, lists, and objects. And YAML is actually very similar to another language called JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. If you're familiar with JSON, YAML is basically doing the same thing, except YAML places a huge emphasis on readability and user friendliness. So all YAML code is designed to be super readable and super clean. So whenever you're writing YAML, you always wanna keep that in the back of your mind, that YAML is designed to be clean and designed to be easy to read. You can define YAML files in two ways, so with two different extensions. One is .yml and the other is .yaml. It doesn't matter which one you use, they're both gonna work. The first thing we'll learn is how to make comments, and this is actually a comment right here. So you just do a hashtag, and then you can type your comment, and this won't be rendered by YAML. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna be defining some information about myself. So we'll define information about a person. And I can go ahead and just define some basic uh, key value variables like name. So this is a string. I can define occupation. And occupation will also be a string, but we'll use single quotes. I can also define numbers, so things like age and this is gonna be an integer. I can also define floating point numbers, so like a GPA, maybe my GPA is like a 3.5. And I can define more complex numbers like exponentials. So I could say like my favorite number is one E plus 10. So this is an exponential number. In addition to numbers, I can also define Booleans. So I could say like male, true, cause I'm a guy. And I can define things like dates. So I can define a birthday and all dates and date times inside YAML are gonna be defined using the ISO 8601 standard. So this is like a standard for defining date times in different languages. So you can just Google that and figure out how you can format your dates. But we could say like my birthday, like 1994, 02, 06. And we could also define a time, so like 14, 33, 22. So this would be a date and a time, and YAML would be able to parse through both of those values. And you can also just create something with a null value, so I could say like flaws would be null, and so this wouldn't have a value, it would just be null. So I have all of this information here with all these different data types, so I can store this inside of an object. So if I just take all this and indent it, then I can store it inside of a person object. So now this person object has all these values. So I could access these values with like person.name or .age. And all of these are stored inside of this object. And the way that we can define scope inside of YAML is with indentation. So all of these are indented to the same level. And so they're all on the same scope. They're all children of this person object. In addition to just key value mappings and objects, we can also define lists of information. So I could define like my hobbies. And over here, we can just put a list of all my hobbies. Now each item in a list is gonna be using this hyphen and this will indicate that it's an item in the list. So I could say like, hiking. So I'm just listing out all of my hobbies and each one of these are list items. So I could loop through this hobbies list and access each one of these items individually. You can also write out lists using a different notation. So I could write like a list of movies. So these would be my favorite movies. And instead of indicating each list item with this hyphen, I can just type them out inside of these square curly brackets. So I can type like dark night, goodwill hunting. So these are my favorite movies. So this, array this list of items is actually equivalent to this list and YAML is going to parse them the same way. It's going to represent them the same way as lists. Just because YAML is so focused on being easily readable, it allows you to define things in different formats. We can also define complex lists. So I could have, for example, a list of objects. I can say this would be like a list of all my friends and for each entry inside of this list, we'll have an object. So I can say like the name of my friend and then we can say like their age. So that's one way that we could define this object in a list item. We could also define an object another way. So I could put the object inside of these curly brackets. So inside of here, I could say same thing. So we can give them a name and also an age. So this is actually gonna be 
the same as this. So we're defining an object just in a different way. And there's actually one more way that we can define a list item. So in addition to just defining the list item using this hyphen, I can also just hit enter and this will make this a little bit easier to read. So I can type name and this will be another friend and another age. So all three of these are actually doing the same thing. They're storing an object as a list item. It's just, they're all formatted a little bit differently. So this one's formatted like this, this one has these curly brackets, and this one has this new line. But they're all equivalent, and YAML will parse all of them as list items. So in addition to defining objects, lists, and values, we can also define values with a lot of information. So I might have like a description here. And maybe inside of this description, we have a lot of text. So this is like a lot of text to kind of look through. What I can do is just format this text a little better. So I'm just entering in and it's basically just formatting the text so it's easier for me to read. And then I'll just format it like this. And so I have all of this text and I don't wanna store it in a single line. So inside of YAML, you can include this greater than sign after the key. And what this will do is it'll tell YAML to render all of this text as a single line. So I created all these new lines, like I made it more readable for me, but I don't want this to get rendered like this. I want this to get rendered in a single line. So by including this greater than sign, YAML will render this in a single line. So instead of including these new lines, it'll just include spaces there. So that's one way that you can store large amounts of text and make it a lot easier to read. There's another way that we can store large amounts of text and this time we can store them so that all of the new lines, all of the indentations and all of the extra little spaces and formatting that we put in there gets preserved. So in this case, none of this formatting is going to get preserved. It's just going to get rendered as a single line. But I could create another value here. We'll call it signature. So this could be like my email signature. And in this case, I want all the formatting to be preserved. So I could say like my name. So in the case of the email signature, I want the formatting to be preserved. So up here, I can put this vertical bar. And what this vertical bar will tell YAML is that I want to preserve the formatting. So it'll preserve these new lines. It'll preserve, like if I put a, a couple spaces there, it'll preserve that. So all of that will get preserved and formatted correctly. In addition to just defining key value pairs, I can also do something called anchoring. So I can actually anchor a value and then access that value in other places in my YAML file. So let's say up here, I wanted to anchor this name. I could put an ampersand here and then I can just type name. And so this is just gonna be the name of the anchor. It doesn't have to match the key, but in my case, I'm just gonna have it match the key. And let's say down here, we wanted to create another attribute. And so ID, imagine we wanted the ID to be the same as the person's name. If I wanted to access that anchor, I can just type the asterisk and then the name of the anchor. And so now ID is gonna have the value of name. In other words, ID will have the value of Mike, right? Because that's the value of the name. So if I was to change the value of the name up here, that value would get updated down here in ID as well. So that's a way that you can anchor a value. Another thing that we can do is anchor an actual key value pair. So instead of just anchoring a value, we can actually anchor the entire key value pair. So I can create an object, we'll just call this base. And in here I can just put an ampersand, we'll again just call this base. And I could create a variable. So let's say variable one, just have a value of value one. And now if I have another object over here, so let's say I have an object called foo, I could then insert this entire value inside of this object. So I can put two less than signs, a colon, and then I wanna put this asterisk and then just base. And so this will actually get rendered instead of just uh, getting rendered like that, it'll get rendered as var1 value one. So I'm actually storing and anchoring this entire key value pair and inserting it into this other object. And then I could put, you know, whatever else I want here. So one last thing I wanna show you is we can actually force different data types to be converted to other types. So this number right here, this is an integer. Imagine that I wanted to force it to be a floating point number or a decimal number. I can put two exclamation points and then I could just type float and this will convert this 23 or it'll render that 23 as a floating point value. So this will be rendered as 23.0. I could also take a number or a different data type and convert it into a string. So I could say two exclamation points, str, and now this will get rendered as the literal value 3.5. So this will get rendered as 3.5 instead of a number. So you can use these to force the different data types 
to be rendered as other data types. So that's the basics of YAML. That's kind of everything that you need to know to get started. And obviously you can use all of the concepts in this video to define your layouts. And the more complex your layouts get, the more you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to using all of these different things. You know, you can use things like anchors or things like this greater than sign to increase the readability of your YAML file. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.